Now let's set our sails to Cupix Vista, the cornerstone of our plunder in Playflows, where the 360 video is put through its paces by an AI using photogrammetry to unearth some pretty astonishing treasures we'll be using in our voyages hereafter. You'll find I've charted many a course here, with treasures still buried and adventures aplenty on the horizon. To embark on your own quest, spot the new project command in the upper right corner of the screen. In the dialogue that appears, you'll be choosing between two types of spyglasses. Each processes the 360 footage in its own way, so choose wisely. I'll be navigating with the Insta 361X2, so that be my choice. But beware, mateys, for here the seas do get a bit choppy. For the Insta 360, we're on the hunt for the separate left and right camera feeds, marked by 00, zero and 10. If you find yourself adrift in these murky waters, Cupix Vista offers a beacon to guide you safely back to port, for what's a treasure hunt without a few enigmas. From your chart table, file browser, simply hoist your files into the web interface, name your project, and set them to upload. Keep a weather eye on the size of these files. Tis wise to transfer them from your camera to a local hold for uploading. Direct upload from your camera is like sailing into the wind, and make sure you have a sturdy internet connection. As the files upload, Cupix Vista's AI will set to work weaving its magic. Once your footage has been charted, it's time to retrieve our treasure map. Select your project and claim the CPC file by clicking the little blue arrow at the bottom of the preview. With our CPC treasure map in hand, we set course for Vista Point, where we'll catch our first glimpse of the bounty and delve into the tools native to the Vista Point viewer. Drag and drop your downloaded CPC file into the browser and allow me to be the first to welcome you to Pirate Cove. As we sift through this bounty, tis worth taking a gander at some of the native tools here in Vista Point. But first, let's get acquainted with the lay of the land. Your mouse, like your wit, will be your most valuable tool. Navigating is as easy as sailing in open waters. To pan, press and hold the right mouse button. To orbit, press and hold the left. To zoom, use your center scroll wheel, and for the truly savvy, an Xbox controller might serve, but we'll stick to the basics for now. Let's cast our eyes over a few of the visual presets to better see our haul. On the left panel, ye can zoom to fit, taking in all your treasure at once. Next, we can switch between perspective view and orthogonal view. Think of it as another form of 3D looking. We'll not delve into the particulars now. That's a tale for another time. You can also choose from different saved views like a plan view or bird's eye view, right and left, and for you BIM buccaneers, an elevation view. You get the drift. The next tool might seem a bit odd at first glance. It's a way to toggle on and off what's known as a view shed or true view for our survey swashbucklers. These bubbles let you see what the AI saw when creating our treasure. Select one from the map, and a window will pop up showing the AI's view. To pan within this view, press and hold the left mouse button. Soon you'll find yourself holding the selfie stick that captured the moment. Remember to smile, matey. The view shed will adjust its orientation in the model as you pan, a handy tool for when you need to spy a particular piece of the treasure with your own eyes. To close the view bubble, just click the small X in the upper right corner of the 360 image. To clear the bubbles entirely, simply click the button on the right-hand toolbar. Now let's plant our boots firmly on terra firma and explore our loot in first person. Select the first person mode by clicking the two feet on the left-hand toolbar. An Xbox controller might come in handy here, but fear not. For if you've navigated Minecraft on your PC, the controls will feel familiar. With the Kobe USD keys at your command, you'll soon master moving about. Remember, there's no gravity here, so wherever you gaze, that's where you'll head. Moving on to our lower tool panel, we spy a few options under Render. This lets you swap between meshes and point clouds with but a click. Both treasures are contained within the CPC file, so there's no need to fuss over it much. The last option, known as a heat map is especially useful if you're trying to gauge the lay of the land. It simply shows the elevation of your treasure in vibrant hues. But hark, it seems those trees might be concealing something. Indeed, some of our treasure is obscured. To unveil it, 
Let's hop over to the settings on the lower toolbar and coax Davy Jones to reveal all by deselecting the hide points away from the viewer option. This features a boon for navigating vast treasure troves, but I'm a greedy sort and fancy seeing all of my loot. Ah, that's better. Now not all treasure is worth keeping, and we might wish to cast some aside. This is simple enough. We just need to limit what we're seeing. Adjust the X, Y, or Z ranges of our bounty to do just that. If you're familiar with Minecraft's construction block, this'll be like charting a familiar course. Next, I aim to tally some of my spoils, or in other words, measure it. There'll be tools for that task. The first tool is straightforward enough. I merely wish to gauge the distance twixt these two trees, perhaps to count the steps to my buried treasure. In the bottom toolbar, I select the measure drop-down and then distance. I can also switch units by navigating to the Settings tab and choosing a new measure. My recorded measurements and some of the deeper secrets beneath the hull can also be reviewed. I can gauge the girth of this tree should I wish to erect a treehouse atop it, and once more it's logged in our measurements panel. Angles to get me bearings, areas to size up a space, planes to judge the evenness of the terrain, and my favourite volumes. How else am I to swiftly tally a pile of gold if not with this? And there you have it, 100 plus cubic feet of, well, dirt, not gold. With a bit of practice, you'll find countless uses for these marvellous tools. The last tool on our lower toolbar might not strike you as treasure at first glance, but if you're keen to refine your reality-capturing skills, this is indeed a trove. The playback button reveals the path your camera took and the time it spent on its journey. It'll also show areas where you can improve your technique by highlighting the line in yellow and red. Yellow for a brisk pace, and red for rushing. Remember, matey, red means you're dead. So best not rush things, eh? At long last, tis time to gather our loot, rather than just gawking at it. Navigate to the File button on the bottom toolbar and select Export. In the dialog that appears, you'll find a bounty of options. Cupix not only allows you to choose from standard point cloud formats like PLY and XYZ, but also permits the export of the Polymesh into OBJ format, perfect for starting to 3D print your treasures, as well as GLB format, which can be directly imported into a myriad of software. But that's a course for another day. The last option is the panoramic photos as JPEG. This saves you the hassle of clipping your video or taking screenshots to capture those bubbles as part of the treasure trove. Now take your booty and let's make haste out of these waters before others come looking for it. Hit export and start saving them to your computer. I'll meet you back on the ship. Join us next week when we dive into how to make use of some of our newfound treasure. We'll show you all you need to know about bringing your loot into recap and laying the groundwork for modeling our first treehouse in Revit. But don't be shy. Give us a like if you found the flavor of this video to your liking, and leave a comment below on any questions you may have. There'll be plenty more plunder to be shared, so smash that subscribe button. Until then, stay nerdy, me hearties. This be your captain signing off.